Welcome to the Speak Her Podcast with your host, Camille Essick, the podcast where creators and innovators connect. Let's get started. Hey, everyone. I hope that you're having a really good day. This is Camille Essick. I am host of the Speaker Podcast. This is the podcast where innovators and creators connect. Be sure to hit that notification bell and subscribe. Follow us on YouTube at Camille Essick Official, on Instagram at Camille.Essick, and be sure to follow us on Facebook at The Speaker Podcast. You know, last night I had a really good conversation with Sills the Man. Um, he has been on our show several times. We actually connected during the pandemic and over the last three years. I've gotten to know him really well. And we've had some really good conversations about black men, love, and relationships from the perspective of a good black man. And last night was again another eye eye opening conversation. Um, and we went live at eight o'clock on Facebook and YouTube. Now, if you happen to miss uh, that conversation, we are doing a rewind or a replay. It'll be tonight at 10 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube. Um, it's going to be raining in some areas, so it'll be a perfect time after you've had dinner and had a chance to settle down. Um, curl up on the couch and check that episode out. I think you'll really enjoy that conversation. During that conversation, we talked about how men deal with stress and sometimes not having the opportunity to unpack those emotions and we also discussed about emotional vulnerability, being a safe space or a vault for each other, particularly from the man's perspective and some other things. Oh, oh. And another thing we also discussed about how men should really have or working through those um, accountability circles and maybe sometimes reevaluating re-eval- um, your friends, your connections and what that looks like in different phases of manhood. So in order to catch that full replay, that conversation, go over right now to my YouTube channel. We will release the streaming version of that conversation shortly. But in the meantime, you can sit down and actually watch the episode or even listen, listen to it while you're driving or working out or traveling. That is on YouTube right now. So be sure to hit that notification bell and subscribe. You can catch that conversation on YouTube. Being a black woman, you know, we deal with so many challenges sometimes with our hair, particularly in different spaces. Um, If you are in the industry of media, you know, acting, things like that. Anytime there's a situation where you're not always the one doing your own hair, it can come with challenges. So Naima LaFord, she's determined to bridge the way um, that is way too wide in the education gap on black hair, which is something that is still ongoing. So after hearing many horror stories about black uh, fashion models and from stylists backstage or on photo shoot sets, not adequately trained to work with, you know, our hair type, um, the stylist who Who's known for creating um, statement making hair looks for fashion editorials, runways and campaigns. She's organized the first educational texture on set event happening on Monday, actually this coming Monday on March 11th at New York's Brooklyn Borough. Now, according to the Fastinisha, to Fastinisha, uh, hair professionals have long asked LaFord to teach a workshop on texture hair in the fashion industry. Now, while she's always considered it, she didn't really, you know, decide to implement the idea until she had a conversation with members of her mentee group, um, Black On Set. Now, she said that she, um, quote, uh, we talked about everything regarding working in fashion, how to get the jobs, how to keep the jobs, how to assist and do um and just the do's and don'ts of working in fashion and being on set. LaFont told um, fas- Fashionista, and she continued to say that um, her mentees are asking about, you know, what about the actual hair? When do we learn how to do texture hair stylings for um, editorial work? And she was like, you know, OK, this is a sign that the texture on set event needs to really happen. And so she's ready to do that. So I'm really excited to hear about this just because and and. In the world of fashion, but also in just in day to day salon industries, because there's still a lot of salons that, um, and which I get it, you know, we all have our own cultural communities, but there are just some stylists that are just not educated at all on texture hair. So I think this is a really good thing that she's doing. And kudos to Miss LaFond on this. And I would love to hear more about this. So stay tuned. If you want to, please go follow follow Naima LaFord on social media for more information. Now, you know, we are hearing so many wild stories about DEI or um, diversity 
um, and inclusion programs and how some companies monetize it. So I would really love to know what you all think about this. So North Face, um, you know, they do a lot of um, cold weather apparel, outerwear apparel, outerwear. So North Face, they've created a new digi- digital course um, aims for um, alley ship in the indoors. Um, but did you know, did that make, did they really miss the mark on this approach to incentivize its customers? So the thing is North Face, y'all, is offering 20% off to shoppers who complete its new racial inclusion and allyship course. <laughs> yeah, y'all, this is actually a real thing. So this week, the outdoor clothing and accessories retailer launched an hour long allyship indoors course. It's a training course and it's designed to foster a deeper understanding of the unique challenges that people of color face when accessing um, the outdoors, I guess like hiking and other outdoor activities. Um, North Fate says that the training highlights perspectives of race and racism in four interactive modules to help customers be better allies. So to incentivize um, the customers to take the course, the brand is offering 20 percent off coupons to all of those that c- to complete the course. <laughs> Yeah, so I would like to know your thoughts on that. Send me an email at the speaker podcast at gmail.com or, you know, go to my page there on Instagram, uh, YouTube, Facebook, and I would like to hear your thoughts on that. Now, you all in Texas, a federal judge has ordered a 55 year old agency that caters to minority owned businesses to serve regard to serve people regardless of race, siding with white business owners who claim the program discriminated against them. Now, the ruling is a significant victory for conservative activists waging a for, far uh, range war legal battle against race consciousness workplace programs. And this is bolstered by the Supreme Court's ruling uh, last June, dismantling affirmative action programs in higher education. Now, you guys, now the advocates for minority owned businesses, they slam the ruling as a serious blow to efforts to level the playing field for black, Hispanic and other minority businesses who face barriers in accessing um, financial and other res- financing and other resources. Then the judge on this case is Judge Mark T. Pittman of the U.S. District Court in the Northern District of Texas, who is appointed by former former President Donald Trump, ruled that the Minority Business Development Agency's um, eligibility parameters they violate the Fifth Amendment's equal protection guarantees that they presume that racial minorities are inherently disadvantaged. So I'm just curious as to how this will impact others down the road and pretty much the future of uh, minority owned women owned, you know, businesses, organizations and such. Um, So stay tuned on that, you all. Now, if you are a fan like me of Jamie Foxx, he is so multi-talented as far as acting, singing, production, directing. Like, it seems like there's nothing he cannot do. And last year, he, you know, he had um, a major health scare and we were all praying for him and he's back. He's really healthy. He's released a couple of films uh, since then. And now uh, it's been released that Jamie Foxx is coming back to beat Shazam. I really like that show. It's a really good show. The actor will once again host a musical game show on Fox after taking a season off doing, uh, regarding his uh, recent sudden, you know, health complication. Now, last season, Nick Cannon took over the host for the series following Fox's temporary departure. Um, his daughter, Corinne Fox, who also serves as the co-host of uh, the DJ, she's returning after leaving last season as well. Now, Kelly Osborne replaced Corinne while she hey, took you. some time off, yeah. you know, probably you. to be with her dad and um, be a support to him. But the duo is back. Get the father-daughter du- duo is back. And did. season seven of Beat Shazam uh, premieres Tuesday, May 28th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Fox with all the episodes streaming on Hulu. Hey you, yeah, you. If you can't get enough of the Speaker Podcast, hit that subscribe button. You'll be glad you did. Now you know we love black excellence, excellence you all. So, um, a black couple from Maryland 
Um, they are being interviewed throughout different um, social media platforms. They are launching a free webinar that'll be hosted about Black entrepreneurship who are interested in hotel ownership. They just bought a quality inn in Memphis, Tennessee for about $3.8 million and are now in the process of acquiring a Holiday Inn in Lake Charles, Louisiana. And so they are releasing their secrets on how they're able to do it. And you can do this too. You can register right now at Black's buyinghotels.com and for more information you can also go to black news on instagram now you all republican lawmakers in west virginia have killed a bill that would have banned discrimination against black hairstylists known as the crown act and this is a blow for black hair advocates in the state so on february 28th lawmakers decided on a swath of bills to be considered for the remainder of the legislation. And the Crown Act was not one of them. So Senator Eric Tarr, he is a Republican. He pushed, uh, he pulled the bill and sent it to the Senate Finance Committee, which he chairs. There he let the bill stall, holding that hair discrimination lawsuits would cost the state too much money, according to Mountain State Spotlight and a spokesman for the legislature. Now, Senator Mike um, Caputo, I hope I'm pronouncing his name properly, who introduced the most recent version of the bill in January, called Tar's decision to pull the bill and send it back to the Senate Finance Committee the kiss of death. Now, the bright side of this, states like California under the helm of uh, Governor Newsom have passed the bill. So we are still watching to see what states um, pick up the Crown Act and which do not. Um, And this will be a story that we definitely need to keep our eyes on. And with that being said, also Republican lawmakers in more than 30 states have introduced or passed more than 100 bills to either restrict or regulate diversity, equity and inclusion initiatives in its current legislative session. And this is according to NBC's NBC News analysts. Such states as Florida, of course, Texas and Utah are among a handful of legislatures that have approved bans on DEI efforts in higher education and public offices. In the world of health, Tia Tomlin Harris, she still remembers the feeling of not being able to breathe when her doctor told her she had a triple negative breast cancer, a rare and aggressive form of the disease at the age of 38. She was shocked and terrified because she really didn't know what to do. So in doing research, she found that cancer education was hard to come by, especially for black women. So Tomlin Harris, um, she has a master's in chemistry, learned that black women exposed to toxic chemicals from the hair and beauty products products that they use. And during this time, she was able to diagnose the cancer again four years later. And she felt it was time to implement healthier lifestyle and a healthier lifestyle and wanted other black women to be aware of preventative or prevention efforts. So she created an online support group in her hometown of Atlanta and for other women on their cancer journey. Now, in 2017, she turned her support network into a nonprofit organization, My Style Matters. Now, this organization has grown to a network of more than 350 women that she says has become a real sisterhood, where that not only can they learn about breast cancer education and product toxicity at no cost, but they can also check up and support one another through their cancer journeys. And I think that's really cool. And you can also uh, contact uh, Tia Tomlin Harris on her Instagram as well for more information. Now, what we're going to do is have a look at the weather over the weekend. Currently here in Charlotte, it is cloudy. The high today expected is 61 degrees with a low of 51 with a 40% chance of rain. Saturday, a little bit cooler, but still on the warmer side, a high of 63, 50% chance of rain with a low of 50 and sunny Sunday with a high of 58 and a low of 41 degrees. Now down in the A, that's right in Atlanta right now, it's currently cloudy, expected high today is 66 degrees now they do have a flood watch and these conditions are expected throughout friday until later on this evening at 7 p.m so be careful out there in the streets um and again that rain chance is 75 percent now tomorrow on saturday they're expecting 75 percent chance of rain throughout the morning with a low of 50 and then sunny but cooler on sunday with a high of 58 degrees Now in the DMV over in Baltimore, today will be mostly cloudy with a high of 57 degrees and a low of 51. Saturday, 80% chance of rain with a high of 53 degrees and a low of 48. Breezy on Sunday with a high of 51 and a low of 36 degrees. 
Now in my hometown of Nashville, Tennessee, currently it is drizzly, raining, but drizzly with a high of 65 degrees and a low of 54. Those rain chances will continue to tomorrow with a 80% chance of rain, high of 57, low of 42. Sunny but cooler on Sunday with a high of 54 degrees and a low of 35 degrees. Now, if you are down in Key West catching some sun, of course, it's partly cloudy but still beautiful with a high of 80 degrees and a low of 76. Sunday, partly cloudy with a high of 78, a low of 77. And Sunday, a high with partly sunny skies, a um, high of 78 and a low of 74. Now off to the West Coast. If you're in Oakland, today will be sunny and clear with a high of 63, low of 45, cloudy tomorrow, which is Saturday, with a high of 58 and a low of 48, 40% chance of rain on Sunday with a high of 58 and a low of 47. Now, if you're deciding to take a drive down the coast, down the 5, in LA, today will be sunny with a high of 68, low of 47. Tomorrow, a little bit warmer, a high of 70 degrees, a low of 48. And Sunday, cloudy skies with a low of 48 and a high of 67. In San Diego today, it is sunny with a high of 66 degrees with a low of 51. Tomorrow will be sunny with a high of 67 degrees and a low of 51. And Sunday, partly sunny skies with a high of 65 and a low of 50. And this weekend's weather report is brought to you by the Weather Channel. I want to say thank you to everyone for supporting the speaker podcast domestically and abroad, um, internationally, having more impact than I realize. And I want to say thank you to all across the pond and around the globe. Um, the speaker podcast is now streaming in 936 cities and 48 countries. And to my surprise, uh, we have listeners in Ireland, Germany, France, Spain, Kenya, India, of course, the UK, France, Brazil. Just thank you to everyone. We have some new cities that have joined us here. Centennial, Colorado. Hey, what's up, everybody in Colorado? Dubler, Lessenter. I hope I'm saying that properly. Shout out to everyone in San Jose, California, Ashburn, Virginia, Chesapeake, Virginia, Hugh, Ohio. Hey, Ohio, what's going on? Mapleton, Georgia. Also say hello to our listeners in LA, Hanford, California, Goodlettsville, Tennessee, uh, Woodburn, I think I'm saying that properly, Massachusetts. Hey, everybody. Shout out to everyone in Boardman, Oregon. Also, hello to those in Corinth, Texas, Antioch, Tennessee, Dillon, South Carolina. And um, of course, I will always want to say thank you to the largest cities like L.A., Chicago, Nashville, Atlanta, Charlotte, etc. But I also want to shout out the cities that a lot of other places may not know about or even acknowledge. And I wanted to take the time to do that. Definitely say thank you to those in Mountain View, California, Covington, Georgia, Madison, Tennessee, Bloomfield, uh, Bloomfield, Connecticut, uh, Homewood, Illinois. Hey, everybody. Austin, Texas. Hey, Denton, Texas. Denver, Colorado. Colorado. Quincy, Massachusetts. Columbia, South Carolina. Carrollton, Texas. Also say hello to those in Mililani Town, Hawaii. I hope I'm saying that properly. Aloha, you all. Thank you to those listening to Sm- in Smyrna, Georgia. Madison, New Jersey. Alexandria, Louisiana. Long Beach, California. LBC, okay. Snellville, Georgia. Lots of Georgia love. Honolulu, Honolulu, Hawaii. Riverside, California. Also those listening in Rocky Point, North Carolina. And Lamore, California. Hey, Lamore, Sunny Lamore, <laughs> Goose Creek, South Carolina. Hello to you. Paradise, Nevada. Hi, how are you doing? Orange Park, Florida, Emerson Hill, New York, Salinas, California, Dearborn, Michigan, Sher- was that Sherwood Park, Alberta. Okay, Canada. Hey, y'all. Jamaica, New York, Compton, California, Cheshire, Connecticut. Hey, you all. Richardson, Texas, Boy, Maryland. What's up, DMV? Hello to those in Parker, Colorado, in Florence, Missouri. And I will try to work more to shout out other cities as you all are at it, listening and downloading. I really appreciate that. You all, we're just a little bit closer to hitting our first milestone of 10,000 downloads. And I really appreciate you all for subscribing, tuning in, and listening. 
listening here. Now, we are going to release some of our podcast episodes really soon. Those things are being edited and chopped. And once they're produced and released, you will get those notifications because if you subscribe, you're in the loop. So thank you to you all. Be safe this weekend. Thank you for tuning in to a little bit of what's going on here in the States. And if you like to hear more, let me know. I would love to hear from you. Follow me on Instagram at Camille.Essick. I'm on YouTube at Camille Essick Official. The Speaker Podcast, we're also on Facebook at The Speaker Podcast. And send us an email with uh, news and information that you would like to hear about at the speaker podcast at gmail.com. This is the speaker podcast, the podcast where innovators and creators connect. Be blessed and have a safe weekend. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the speaker podcast. Be sure to follow Camille on Instagram at Camille.essic, Facebook at the speaker podcast or www.camilleessic.com.